Okay, so I, I have uh, something I actually just thought of in between this recording and the last recording. Uh, when we found Iris's body, we left the eye in the car. So I, I kind of forgot that detail. So let's get started. That reduces our credibility in some ways for correctly like seeing Iris there. But then it, it also means like it's not like the eye forcing us to see something that wasn't there. So it wasn't like her doing, which actually, Jesus. That could actually be a thing. I haven't really, really thought about that, but, but like because they already showed like she can project herself, then she can do that sometime when we're not expecting it. And like trick us, you know? Huh. Anyways, that wouldn't have happened there because we left her in the car to charge. So, yeah, huh. All right. So here we are interviewing this guy. The supposed assassin. And the one that hurt Iris's mom. I don't know. It's not like I'm counting. Number 89. Your real name. I don't know. I forgot. Djibouti. Northeast Africa. A small republic of roughly 900,000. That's interesting. Earlier they said that he didn't have an accent for a Japanese person, so he probably wasn't a foreigner. I mean, obviously we're getting the dub voice, but... Huh. I don't take kindly to stupid lies. Oh, he's lying. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I thought maybe he's just a master with accents. Oh, you know about that. It's true. I called Sejima's secretary. <laughs> I got him on the line and I told him something very important. You spoke with him directly? Yeah. I told him to call somebody. Somebody? Shut up. I can't tell you anymore. <sighs> All right. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Two days ago, you called our investigation office. You said you know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey. Don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? Yes, I promise. Shit. <laughs> You're lying. You don't want to release me. That's fine. I was expecting this anyway. I just wanted a good excuse to leave the prison. What do you mean? You really want to know? Here's what I mean! What is that other guy doing standing there not helping? Wait, are we dead? You'll make a good hostage for me. Take me to the exit. Now. Okay. I don't know. I saw a glimpse of something that made it look like we were dead, but I guess I was seeing wrong. That'd be crazy if we already hit a, bit, uh, a bad end already. Speaking of which, I gotta check my paths and see if... Any new ones have opened. Oh, darn. Okay, so it looks like there hasn't been any other paths yet. a life sentence just escaped from Metro Police. And the incompetence of the police force shows its, its ways again. 
I ordered everyone to keep quiet about this, but it's only a matter of time before the press sniffs this out. Like, how many times have they done things right versus wrong? I don't think that comes in their favor. We need to get number 89 back before then. For when? I do. Number 89, but don't worry. I, I'll give it to you later. Wait, what? Yeah, he was completely worthless. He punched out an officer and stole his clothes. He put on the uniform and brought me with him at gunpoint. Well, he had the gun in his pocket. No one on the floor even knew this was happening. He got on the elevator and made it to the ground floor. He even stole my security card. He said he'd kill me if I tried anything. I suppose the whole escape took him about uh, five minutes. He must have planned this. You're rather calm about all this. I'm coming down from being terrified for my life. <laughs> How would I know? After he got to the exit, he let me go. I didn't see where he went. I collapsed right there. All right, well, I don't think we're as much to blame as this guy is. Or even the people that allowed him to be in there and apparently have nobody guarding the place or anything. But I'll apologize to be nice. Boss. It's my fault he got away. I'm sorry. Don't waste time, Apollo. Go catch him. I'm the one who has to go on an apology tour now. <sighs> we really messed up this time. Holy shit. <laughs> I really don't like her blaming me. I mean, I know I just accepted blame, but... It's like... You apparently had no security precautions for taking this guy out here. Oh, then again, I did ask her to do that. But, yeah, I don't know. I know you are already aware of- I checked all of them. Number 89 fled in a car- So he had an accomplice? Yes. Did you see who was driving? I did. See, in a lot of ways, I gotta say, so far at least, this game feels less believable than the Zero Escape games, in part because it's an open world, and, like, anything can happen, and then people are, like, making these, like, big mistakes. Um, but it, like it's more related to the real world to where in Zero Escape like you're always confined to like one building and people in like highly stressful situations so it seems more understandable when people make mistakes like of this magnitude. Who was it? You and I know him well. Renju? Wait, what did Renju do? What? How is Renju involved in, like, every single thing that happens in this game and every single character we meet? It's so weird. Renju? Why? Date, Moma is home. Moma? From the Kumaku- I'll connect him. Hey, Date. I just got the word. Renju's been seen. What? Where? Hey, don't forget our deal. Deal? What deal? So our date with Iris is going to be going to see this guy. <laughs> you forgot already? I'm talking about Tessa. Oh, right. I'll be waiting. You know what to do. What should we do? We have no choice. To MoMA? Yes. Whoa, 443? You're late, buddy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> late, 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 late. You're late. I'm going home. Never! Have you forgotten the vows you exchanged? Are you drunk? No, <laughs> of course not. Wait, she is sitting drunk. You're drunk. I kid, 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 kid. I'm kidding! I can't believe I'm gonna shovel forge with you. I'm getting excited! We are not shovel forging. I was talking about the date, silly. What? Shovel forge and a date are synonymous. Is that a euphemism? So where are we going? <laughs> We're taking her to the mob. <laughs> oh 
hundred percent. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So they're all the same place. To where the dragon is. To meet the dragon. The dragon? Like that dragon? Shenmue. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Like a fantasy world with swords and magic. And you're gonna teleport me there. Woohoo! I'm getting fired up. Ooh, look at the dragon! So cool. <laughs> she is very easily amused. So this is a crime syndicate building, right? Yeah. Kumakuras. And you were trying to make me believe this was some kind of fantasy world? No, that's what you thought. What? Date lied to me. Date, you bastard! <laughs> you made Tessa cry. M Mister, save me! Oh, Throw this man into Tokyo Bay. Got it. I'll have him sleeping with the fishes. This is an interesting turn of events. I can hardly believe it. Mama, I held up my end of the deal. You sure did! You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okiura? I keep waiting for them to say something interesting when I look, but they never do, so I'll stop doing that. Uh, sure. Sorry for bringing you here. It's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. About as contradictory as meatless beef. The old boss was really violent. He would take a cheese grater to someone's leg if they looked at him funny. But after I took... Crystal. Methamphetamines. No, we don't do drugs. <laughs> we don't deal with that stuff. We had to restructure the whole operation. Cut? The throats. <laughs> no, not like that. Oh yeah, I haven't introduced. I'm 24. How the hell are you 20? Wait, 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 wait. The, the, the little eight-year-old's 24 too. He's got wrinkles. Mama is lying. Oh, okay. He is at least 48. I was gonna say, but in this game, you know, who knows, man? He's probably 24. Absolutely. Sorry for not introducing, but my name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. Uh, how did you know that? Is he stupid? MoMA may not look it, but he's a huge ASAT fan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Gambling. Bet, debt, ASAT! Worries. Uh, forget, Fred ASAT! Now what does she say? A set, you bet! Wow, my catchphrase! Thank you! <laughs> this, this is kind of embarrassing. But sorry, MoMA. I don't like gangsters. <gasps> <laughs> I don't like gangsters either. Gangsters are awful. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I should feel a little bad for him. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Okiu? I heard he escaped the hospital. So did I, but I don't know anything more than- Please tell me! Alright, this is one time I can actually use a recap. It's been a while since I did that. The hospital stuff. Right. Yeah. And he's right in here. Hold up. What were you saying about Tessa's dead body? Oh. Dante saw a parallel world with my dead body in it. <laughs> A parallel world? Never heard of it? Oh, yeah, of course I have. Yeah, yeah, right. Parallel worlds and all that shit. 
Yeah. I don't understand it, but I suppose he does. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. But why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we need yet another Japanese game teaching us about uh, Schrodinger's cat. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Which it probably will still at some point, but... Mm, either way, I need to find him. You said on the phone that you saw Renji. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So, tell me where he is. Hey, I held up my... I brought Iris like you asked. Date, come here. Date, I don't quite know how to ask this, but... That's really small from this angle. Can you ask Tessa if I can... shake her hand, please? Oh, that's it? Sure. Iris. A favor? He, uh, wants to see your boobs. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I didn't say that! <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. What I meant was, he wants to shake your hand. Oh, a handshake. Sure, I would never show my boobs. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. So how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. First, Sunfish Pocket, the maid cafe. Okay, we figured that one. Second, Ikume Shrine. We have not been there. Is that where... Is that where the... Iris's mother... She met that guy that was shot in the stomach? I thought she said it was in a shrine. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume... Got it. No problem. Yeah, I don't... It doesn't look fun. Anyway, Moma, take care of... What? What? Wait! <laughs> You're leaving me here? You'll be safe with him. <laughs> oh my god. Are you serious? Look at his face! Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that! He would bid higher than anyone. I told you, we're clean now. We all go home on time, we follow government regulations. See ya. Wait! What about Shovel Forge? I told you I never promised to play with you. But you promised me a date! D Date! <laughs> Is this true? Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Date and date, they're spelled the same. <laughs> I think the voice actor got it wrong. It could be either one. That's interesting. No, I guess I'm easily amused. But it, it, I think he was saying date, not date. You son of a bitch! Ah, oh. I'm gonna ignore that. Good idea, Date. You're gonna look for Mr. Okiura, right? Oh my God! If he doesn't take her, that's ridiculous. Take me with you. If you do, I'll tell you about last night. Her late night. Yeah, we know. Fine. Yay! Dante, don't ignore me! A clean gang? Oh, that's just a toy. Oh, just a toy. <laughs> 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 Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. I want to go to the warehouse, too, where you found my dead body. Something bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? That sounds good. I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, my chest hurts. Right. Let's go to there. That sounds fun. Cyrus. But I'm here now. Maybe I'm a ghost. You don't look like a floating sheet. You have legs. But maybe they're not legs. 
Maybe they're my boobs. Oh, come on. Didn't you say that you saved me in your dream? What did you mean by that? I told you that I'm with an organization called Abyss, right? You even explained yeah, it. Yeah, you told me two days ago. We find clues in the minds of suspects and witnesses. We enter what we call Somnium, a dream world projected by their subconscious. That's what the entire organization is about. How do you even do that? We have a machine that we call the Sync Machine. What is that? It's a Sync Machine. That's not an explanation. Tell me how it works. Well, uh, I can explain, but it will require a bit of background. So my corpse was... Yeah. I mean, she's not going to know these, I don't think. Nanotech? Technology related to really small things. Like, really teeny tiny things. And when they make a machine, they're called nanomachines. I heard they use them a lot for medical and tech fields. Some of the cutting-edge nanomachines can even go inside your body and cure illnesses. They can even cure cancer. And they go, beep, beep, beep. That's what Mom said. Well, I don't know if it was like, beep, beep, or... But anyway, nanotechnology costs tons of money. Only a few people can even afford it. My college professor said only the richest of the rich have nanotechnology. But he's pretty liberal, so... Largely accurate. Nano is a prefix meaning 10 to the negative ninth power. A nanometer is therefore... The sync machine uses machines approximate... Viruses are on average 20 to 970 nanometer. This allows them to access... During a sync, the nanomachine... I've heard of it. The blood brain barrier, right? If you say so. Inside the school, there's an army of little teeny tiny soldiers that surround the brain. Okay. They protect the brain from bad stuff in the blood, right? That's almost it. The blood brain barrier describes the architect. It is a kind of shield that protects the objects too large. I guess not. No. I'm oh, she mentioned that before, though. Oh, interesting. I didn't expect the response. But she mentioned, uh, watch it or however you pronounce it. It's the core programming behind AI, right? AI. Oh, right. You mean artificial intelligence. That's right. I mean, for some reason, That's when wrong. she said that, I was thinking it was related to, like, my eye or something. The no. eye AI. You're shivering. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. What? Hmm? To borrow Pewter's explanation. Okay, so she has some connection to AI? Some history with it, obviously, for her to react like this? Weird. Unless she's like an AI herself. And I can't think of anything else. With the advent of the Wadjet system, we can extract the data of the human psyche. This data is sent to the brain, which achieves the sync. Okay, you have the. Let me explain how sinkers like me equip the sink gear, and inside the helmet are nano cables, and on the tip of each of these cables, but the machine can't reach the brain. Do you know why? The BBB soldiers say, Go away! Well, but for the sink to work, we have to get the nano machine. How do we do that? Drill a hole in the skull? No. In Shovel Forge, you can use a pickaxe. No, it has nothing to do with tools. Skulls already have one of those holes is the optic canal, which the nano cables of the sink gear go through your eyes. Oh, gross. Not so gross for him. That'd be easy, but... Ugh. Then go to the back of your eye socket. Then through the optic canal to the... The sea? The sea of brain cells. And that sounds kind of romantic. It's only a chunk of protein. Once the nano cables arrive at their destination, they slide into the brain like roots of a tree. And on the tip of each cable, the nano machine sends and receives data. This is controlled by the Wadjet system. Wadjet. Okay. And that's how the sinker and the subject exchange information. Exchange? Think of it this way. The human brain has a max capacity of one psyche. Multiple instances of consciousness inside one brain can cause a total collapse of higher brain functions. And what about multiple personality disorder? 
You know how a car only has one steering wheel? If there were two, there would be accidents all over the place. Well, don't some planes have two control sticks? Okay. Eh, maybe it was. What I'm trying to say is that the human body can only hold one person. If you try to have two people inside one brain, it will break. I see. Because of this, the sinker's data goes inside the subject's brain, and the only thing inside the subject's mind at the time of the sink are their memories, like a house with no one inside. We sinkers break into the house, look for clues, and leave, all within six minutes. There's a time limit? Yes, or else the house will collapse on our heads. The neural circuits would become too deeply... To put it simply, the sinker would... Ooh. Damn it. Thank you for explaining it. I don't completely understand how sync works. Just don't tell anyone. This is extremely confidential. It's okay, I won't. Nobody would believe you anyways. Date, tell me this. Hmm? Who did you sync with yesterday? Didn't I show you his picture? Congressman So Sejima. So that's you why you know picture? so much about him. You just asked about him. But you've never met him, right? I haven't, I swear. Hey, Date, you saw my... I did. And in so stream, you saved me... Yeah. And then somehow, I resurrected. Yeah. Hmm, Date, that means you're... Achoo! Date, is the cold too much? Yeah. Iris, let's get... Roger that! Why is that on here? Huh. You okay? <laughs> it's okay. I just... Uh, missed a step there. Uh, have we ever eaten? <laughs> she said she was, like, starving earlier. Although I assume it's probably something more serious than that. It's nostalgic. This place is a memorable one for me. Six years ago I used to come here with someone. Oh, I knew it. So this is the guy that was shot in the stomach. Someone? I used to call him uncle. He was a thoughtful, reliable man. I thought of him as a father. But one day, he just disappeared. She's talking about... Hitomi's lover. Okay, wait, I'm trying to think. So, at least I had a theory that it could be maybe be Date, but... Did she act like we were familiar when we met? I don't not remember. I know the mom did. The Iris. Huh, I don't know. Maybe. When you asked me why I became an idol, I wasn't being entirely truthful. I told you that it was because I wanted to become famous. But more specifically, it was for Uncle. I've been looking for him for six years, but I didn't find him anywhere. I didn't know where else to look, so instead of me finding him, I thought that he could find me instead. You think if you became famous, he'd contact you? Yeah. So that is why she became- I mean, it's also been my dream since I was- So why do you use the name Ace? Shouldn't you use your real name? Oh no, I don't have to. He was the one who came up with the name Aset. He told me that if I ever became an idol, I should use that name. Whoa, okay. This is starting to make me think of, like, time traveling shenanigans or something. Because otherwise, why would he care? I mean, that, that seems like a really weird thing. It's like, it's like us time traveling back and telling her you should use this name or something, I don't know.
It's called Ikume Iribiko Isachi no Miko. There are legends about this place written in the... It's a shrine dedicated. The old legend goes one day, Ikume Iribiko sent one of his followers to find a mysterious... A fruit called Tokijiku no Kaku. It's said that eating it will grant you immortality. After many hardships, Tajimo... But by the time he got back, Ikume Iribiko Tajimo Mori mourned. He handed half of the fruit to the man's wife, and he left the other half on Ikume Iribiko's grave. Then... It is said that that fruit is still inside the shrine behind us. Really? Fruit of immortality? Yes. Not interested? No, not really. I'd rather have normality than immortality. A flower over there. Flower? You can't see it. For I know it's there because I've been... Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot I could turn. Too dark. An iris. More specifically, a winter iris. This is the same flower that was on. Yeah, she had that weird dialogue about flowers. When I met her too. Something about like a flowers being a hint. It's the same kind that's at my house. I told you about what it means, right? Good news and hope. Iris is also a part of the Eye. And the Greek goddess of rainbows. She delivered messages from the gods. That's why the flower means good news and hope. Mr. Okura is it? I mean, of course he is. It's not like we came here right away. He's already taken off. Too bad. It looks like there are no f***ing here, Zwoop. Date. We, we should get moving. Got it. Hmm, I don't even know why that's on here, so we'll go here. What's going on here? <laughs> Why are you two together? She has the weirdest voice. Oh, well, it's... Forget it. Thanks for letting me stay last night. It does not sound like a 12-year-old. It sounds like a... I don't know. It sounds like a 40-year-old maybe trying to sound 12. Oh, no trouble at all. You can even live with me if you want. <laughs> That's a great idea. The roommate I have right now really sucks. <sighs> this girl. Why are you asking me about it? I was just curious. That company was made by my grandpa, but daddy has nothing to do with I don't know anything about the warehouse. this already. Don't ask me the same questions over and over. Date, look. She's possibly. What are you gonna do? Scold me or something? Why do you care what I do? Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. In fact, I'm feeling good. Um, excuse me. Mizuki was crying earlier. Crying? Yes, we were trying to cheer her up. What happened to her mom was, and we thought she was having a hard time. She must have come here looking for company. That's probably why she stayed with Iris last night. 
She didn't want to be alone. Shoko's body is still under the jurisdiction of the police. There has not been a ceremony, nor has the... The culprit has not been caught, and on top of that, her roommate has abandoned her. I did not abandon... In any case, there are many... Mizuki is just... Please. I wonder if we could order food. Uh, it's pretty awkward that the waitress is just standing here at the table while we're all talking. The police asked me a but, but I don't know where. She's my friend from back when I worked here. We would hang out outside of work too. We go to haunted places and UFO sightings and stuff. Blow those boys away! Blow those boys away! What? Yeah, blow those boys! Mizuki, uh... You really shouldn't say that. <laughs> Mr. Okira helped me. You know how my mom is single? He really supported her. He even changed my diaper when I was a little baby. I got hired by Lemniscape all because of him. Iris used to stream all her own content. Like singing and dancing and gaming and stuff. But before we knew it, she went viral. Right, I heard about that. That's how she started getting offers, right? But because Iris's mom knows Renju, she decided to go with Lemniscape. But there's more to it than that. There are other reasons. Daddy was totally taken in by her talent. Her talent? Dancing, really. Her dancing is what got her into Lemniscape. He knew ever since she was young that she would be talented. He did I didn't know that. Daddy's not the type to give compliments. <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. I didn't know he thought of me that way. More than sleeping and eating? Well, maybe about the same as eating. Anyway, I've always loved moving my body, ever since I was a little girl. And you're fast, too. Yeah, I did a lot of track meets. Were you always the anchor? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I told you that Iris is the goddess of rainbow. She was the messenger of the gods. Rainbows being so fast to disappear was the sort of- You're as fast as your name's- You wanna- <laughs> Sure. Right here? Oh, I want to see too. Me too. I would also like to see. Mm, I don't know. Come on. But. All right. Up. Wait. Gee, fine. If... Yay. Iris. All right, world. Get ready. See my dance. Invincible Rainbow Arrow. Hit it. That are flying on maps, Mr. Flying. You'll think that I'm flying this old tale of mine. I don't think it's the same actress singing. A permanent fire, cold frost on the pyre. Fruit never expires. You've seen in your eyes, you've seen in your life. While the old father has, while the blind need the blind, the marble loses shine. The eye clouds by design. I always think dubs of songs are kind of weird. Like 
I mean, the song's written in a specific way. It probably sounds better in the original language. holds a special place in That's right. That's yeah, he's really... T I look up to him. He's done so much... Iris. What were you doing Sunday? You haven't fulfilled your promise. This is the date. I, I told you. No info until the date is complete. Don't you get it? This date isn't over yet. Well, a triple board sea devil or an anacanthus. That's enough. Mizuki comes. She's really fresh. I like it here. Everyone treats me nice. Is it because you're the daughter of the owner? No, it's not like that. We're BFFs. She wields extraordinary power. The Okiura family is real. I've heard that Renji. When do you meet? When? I got the info a few minutes ago, but I. Oh. Ringing any bells? Well, he hasn't come back. Yesterday? But I was here yesterday. It was after that. After you and Ota left. Why didn't you tell me sooner? You didn't ask. And I don't have any way to contact you. Damn it. We just missed him. Alright, let's see if this says anything new. For Iris, he was asking everyone where she was. Looking for me? Yeah. Did he give a reason? No, not in particular. Iris, can you think of why he would be looking for you? No, not at all. Azuki? I don't know either. But then wasn't she at home? Anything else? Well... He did seem really sick. He was pale and sweating. It must have been because of the accident. Perhaps. Unfortunately, we didn't find... But we discovered that... But why? We can think about that later. Let's get going. Yeah. Oh, this is to get food. We were just at a restaurant, though. That's weird. I'm so hungry. That's weird. T Tessa, why are you here? I told Date I was hungry, so. I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual. E yes, right away. She's in the live. I think she's. How about you? I was just. He means. Date? <laughs> Not shovel for. On a date. Oh, a date. Huh. A date? I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu oh eggs. My God. I no thanks. Yeah, my dad taught me. You're making me something. Sure. You're still looking for well, like I told you before. Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! What do you mean coming Uh Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa died? Yep. Rice. 
Ota's omelet rice is so good it- Is that a compliment? <laughs> well, Ota- Yeah, I have- Have you met him? Yeah, I don't think she- That's not true! Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa! Not very real, whether out of jealousy or otherwise. Hey, can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure! How should I explain this? Well, um... Oh, I know! Let's play rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah! If we tie, nothing happens! Here we go, Schrodinger's cat! <laughs> Schrodinger's rock, paper, scissors game. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me some. What if I win? I'll do anything! Uh, anything? Mm-hmm. Anything. Dante. Your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Okay. okay, let's go. One, two, three, shoot. The uh, decisions. All right, I don't think she's the type that would throw rocks, so therefore I will throw scissors. Shoot. Oh, no, 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 you see, this this looks like scissors, but it's actually paper. That doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? You're really not taking this well. So, I get my prize. I don't have any money. I don't want money. Instead... Yeah? Can you pet my head and say, Iris is a cutie cutie? The cutest person in the whole wide world? A cutie angel? Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. No, no, no! Put your heart into it! Iris is a cutie cutie, the cutest person in the whole wide world. A cutie angel. <laughs> we just played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! I do not have that functionality. So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. See, uh, I mean, this is a super minor nitpick, but <laughs> like he's all like reluctant, like, oh no, I don't want to go on a date with you or anything. But then, but then he's all uh, acting like this. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to get a read on really anything about him. He's he's so weird. <laughs> he's such a weird character. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can. Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? No. Or the 100 million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. The Spatial Temporal Man, and The Lost Friend, and the story of two sisters. Well, at least they're avoiding uh, the cat talk. Wait, are they gonna do all these? <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of cool. interesting. Actually, that would be cool if you just pick one and they just explain one. Um, This one sounds familiar. I feel like we maybe have heard that, or maybe I've heard of that one. So, there's this girl. Let's call her B. She's practicing piano in her room, and her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. She was really gonna let her, but she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went, but then B hears her sister at the door. I'm home! B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her- So B asks, but her mom said- What are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all- She asks her little sister about it, and she learns that her favorite TV show was on, and before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to- So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. 
Yeah, and what B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. That was a pretty boring example. I know a ton of stories, like being suddenly transported one year into the future. And there's a missing persons report out for you. You look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. You look through the contact, and it's filled with names you... Sounds scary. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese. Oh, no. But they're speaking a completely different language. And all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. That's a prime example of a parallel world. These are kind of fun. There's this kid, A. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. And it looks like we're actually gonna have to go off. <laughs> One day after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. Oh, okay, okay, that's totally natural, okay. The nerves were still connected, but... A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps... So, A asks him about it. A is really concerned for us, but Suzuki just says, Yeah, I'm fine. And by now, A is really curious. But he's... The story only gets weirder from here. <laughs> oh. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. I would say that's less weird. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. Ooh. That's like a corpse party thing. Hey says, what are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Dante, look at this picture. There's a famous experiment regarding that you show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Okay, um, I will say this is Booba and this is Kiki. Probably just because Kiki sounds a little sharper. It kind of fits better. Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. Kiki. The rounder one is Booba and the jagged one is Kiki. All right, I'm not in the weirdest, uh... What is it? One fiftieth percent of people? Is it one out of fifty? Yeah, yeah, one out of fifty. Nine percent. <laughs> it's two percent. But... Isn't that weird? No. Booba sounds rounded. Kiki, very sharp name. In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way, and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. Oh, that's cool. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Like worshipping the sun and the sea, or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. I mean, that's just biology. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. What was that, what was that one? <laughs> worshipping the sun and the sea? Yeah, that's just because that's the way humans are. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. Ooh, Carl Jung. There exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. Mm -hmm. That's what Yoon said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. Yes. I feel like I've heard of something like this before. You know, I, if only if only it had some kind of name. That's. You're not gonna say it. parallel world. No, she's talking about some kind of field. 
Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. All right, I feel like I've heard of this before, so let's see. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Yes. I mean, well, not personally. Yeah. Not personally, but... The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. Hmm. Okay, I think I have heard that before. There are lots of examples, like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings. Or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car. Um... No, I don't remember that. I think, I think the back seat was just a solid back seat. But in our world, he was in a six-seat car. I don't know if that's what that would look huh. like. I thought it was a four-seater, too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. Electric mouse? I have... Oh, Sonic? No, no, no. Sonic's not a mouse. It's a hedgehog. It wasn't? Nope. It's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh, you mean po uh, Pikachu. Oh... Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? No, because it's just simple things and a mistake. That would explain it, I guess. That's silly. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'm not upset about it. <laughs> but no. This world is full of really interesting stuff, but you know the most interesting I have to say, all? though, even though they're kind of bombarding you with all this right now, it is handled better than I would say 999, for example, handled it. Like, when they spread it out, but it's like you'd randomly do a puzzle, and then it would, like, you know, hit you with, hey, have you heard of this crazy theory? And it'd be like, what? And it has nothing to do with the conversation, you know? That is probably more off-putting to people. Than this is. No, what? Also, I like they're giving new examples that they haven't used in previous games. That humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. Yeah, this stuff's interesting. But I mean, there's so many planets. I mean, it makes sense one of them, or more than one, would develop in such a way that humans could exist. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and. All of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. Would you be able to pick out the one? One in a hundred million times, yeah. Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Yeah, you would have a pretty good chance. Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Or just multiple planets. <laughs> then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the anthropic principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. What? No, uh... I don't... <laughs> the spatial temporal man. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was an average guy, average height, average build, uh, brown hair. 
shocking that we've all seen him. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. Spatial temporal man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. Uh, yeah, that one I don't buy at all. So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the class? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose. Or Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Or the kid is just crazy. Similar to the kid that saw the guy, his friend's eyeballs fall out. Yeah. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No. A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. Then he's mentally ill. It is weird. And there's no way you can pop your eyeballs back in like that. Well, not necessarily. There's such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back oh in. Oh my with god. The <laughs> what? No, that did not happen, kid. Ota is correct. Oh well, yeah, it happens all the time. Are easy to replace in their socket, as long as none of the nerves or oh, blood Jesus. vessels were damaged. They're used But that doesn't prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, some of those worked a lot better than others. <laughs> some were interesting, some of them were just freaking crazy. When did you two get so knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this is very a Zero Escape thing, where every single character knows about all this type of stuff. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. That's why I decided to research it too. Oh, hey, I know about conspiracies and secret societies too. Of course I do. I find that stuff fascinating. If you want, we could talk about those. Maybe next time. Now where's that omelet rice? Done! Okay, I will call it a video here. That's kind of fun. And I, I'm sure it's setting stuff up, so we'll see where it goes from here. Until next time.